Welcome to Still Growing in Grace, a weekly program dedicated to inspiring joy, giving hope, and delighting in grace. This program is brought to you by Hope Fellowship, your community church located on the second floor of the St. Jacob's Outlet Mall. I'm Pastor Mike Zenker, and for the next half hour, I'll be sharing with you a message of hope that will help you expand your understanding of God's love and amazing grace. So many are tired of trying harder to live the Christian life. I've got great news for you. You can stop trying. God already deeply loves you, totally accepts you, and really, really likes you. Enjoy today's program as we dig deeper into what it means to be still growing in grace. Welcome to Still Growing in Grace. I'm so glad you tuned in today to listen to this week's episode. I hope you'll find hope, encouragement, and joy in what you are about to hear. Thank you for those who have sent in emails and notes and Facebook messages that you're listening and letting me know where you're listening from. I encourage the rest of you to please also do that. Uh, I know sometimes it takes a little extra effort, but you have no idea how much it means to hear where people are listening from and and that you're listening. To me, this is just going out into nowhere. Uh, if, uh, if you're local to the Kitchener-Waterloo area, then it's going over the local radio station. But if you're listening to this online via podcast or uh, on YouTube watching these videos, because these are all recorded into a video format as well, uh, let me know you're watching. Let me know you're listening. I'd love to hear from you. Today, I want to change a topic uh, from what we had been doing. We've been laying a foundation of identity, uh, who we are in Christ, and why it's so important. Today, I want to talk about hope and not losing hope. I know there are many people working through difficulties, family relationships, circumstances that are crushing them. And today, I want to offer some hope from the Old Testament, an old story that many of us will be familiar with. You know the story of Joseph and the uh, multicolored uh, coat he had. Um, I think there was a musical done with something about the Joseph and the Technicolored uh, dream coat or something like that. Whatever it was called, I forget. But that story is well known around the world in many cultures. So today I want to take a look at how can we find hope in our own circumstances by looking at somebody else's life who's going through and has gone through deep, deep struggles, deep wrestling in his soul. And I think Joseph is one of those individuals that can teach us much. In Genesis 39, 21, it says, But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love, and the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. This, this is a powerful, powerful reminder. First of all, reminding us of who our source is, who is in charge, who gives favor. I know many people today that, including myself, I've tried this. I've tried to get my own favor. I've tried to gain my own favor. Uh, I've tried to make connections with people, trying to increase my direction and me being the cause of a change or direction where I want to go. When really, it's the Lord. It is our Heavenly Father who is the true and authentic source. Sometimes He lets you go. Sometimes He redirects us. It's those redirections that are really, really hard. At least that's what I'm finding. Let's take a quick peek at the story of Joseph because many may not realize this, but he was an immature and growing young man. When the story begins for most of us, it begins with uh, Joseph uh, being given this coat. Uh, his father is really proud of him. Uh, his father is also extremely unwise in how he handles the favoritism of his son because all the other brothers recognize the favoritism. And this becomes a long story of betrayal and a very deep journey of pain. This is, uh, this is like Joseph being set up as a boss 
and uh, his brothers are not liking this. So they definitely uh, set him up. They uh, uh, find a way to get rid of Joseph, even deceive their father into believing that Joseph was killed by uh, wild animals, showed him a coat drenched in blood, and his father said, yes, that's my son. And so he um, resolved in his soul that Joseph was dead, and his brothers are just hoping nothing will ever come back on us. And they didn't see it coming. Um, He's also jailed later, innocently. And just as we read in uh, the previous verse, uh, even though he was in jail innocently, he still found favor. He still had favor with the people where he was. The guards found favor with him. The the, uh, other uh, imprisoned individuals found favor with Joseph. So this is a big deal. Now, you'll remember in uh, before he was sold off as a slave, Joseph had these dreams. Now, I don't know about you. I don't remember many of my dreams. I know people that remember every single dream all the time. They remember everything vividly. And I don't get it. But in ancient Egypt and Babylon, dreams were extremely significant. And there were a couple of times when Joseph went and found his family, talked to his brothers, and even his mom and dad. And one of the dreams was he was out in a field and they were harvesting their their wheat and stuff. And they had these piles of wheat. And so each wheat represented each of their family members. And his wheat was in the middle and all the wheat bowed to him uh, as if to worship him and give him leadership. Well, he went and told his family about this dream. Not a smart idea. This was called youthful immaturity, some things you should keep to yourself. But he did. Turns out the story ends up being true at the very end. So here he tells that dream. Then he has the gall to tell another dream. He said there were uh, uh, stars in the sky equaling the number of brothers he had and uh, uh, other two big ones. I think it was the sun and the moon. And they also bowed to him. Well, when he told his father that, his father said, hey, you stop it. You do not. Are you, are you suggesting we will bow to you? You put this foolishness aside. And so Joseph did. But listen, he had already told the dream. He had already created an unnecessary conflict. And then, of course, he got sold off because it just got to be too much. But these dreams are significant. The culture believed that the small g gods communicated through the dreams. Well, I know many believers today who feel God communicates to them through their dreams. Whether you're one who believes that or not, if you do not believe that, well, that's fine, but don't attack it just because you don't believe it. Uh, I know many individuals who've had tremendous dreams where God has shared encouragement to them and spoken deeply into their lives. Who are you to say it wasn't God? So it's very interesting. Mind you, I promise you, If you end up having a dream that deeply impacts you and you're changed by it, you become one who starts to believe that dreams can have an influence. So anyway, Joseph observed uh, some dreams, his own. But later, when he was in prison, he met two people, a baker and a butler. And these two gentlemen in prison, remember, he was given favor in the prison, these two individuals had dreams. And so Joseph asked them about the dreams and they told the story and uh, uh, they, he was concerned for their welfare. So let's, let's talk about the baker first. The, the baker had a dream. Uh, he's kind of, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, he had these things on his head of food and the birds came and essentially he was uh, um, uh, told that uh, there was bread and, and there, was an, there was a negative interpretation to his dream. Well, he was told that uh, when, when he was all done, um, he ended up finding out that uh, uh, from Joseph, that he was not going to last three days. The uh, um, the other gentleman, man, he had a, a very, very positive interpretation of his dreams. And he ended up living uh, uh, the next day, which or three days later. So the, the so if we go back to the the baker, the baker, he represented uh, the bread. He talked about it, which in scripture, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He talks about the body. Interestingly enough, in this dream, 
It was three days later that Joseph said, Joseph said to the baker, in three days from now, you will die on a wooden post. Who else do we know that died on a wooden post, cross, in, over th- and then was dead for three days. This is a really neat picture of what uh, was speaking forward to what could be happening at the cross. But that was the baker. The butler, on the other hand, he had a very positive interpretation. In fact, it was the butler's interpretation that came first. Uh, and that's when the baker said, hey, t- I'll tell you my dream. Tell me what my dream is. And that's when it was bad news. But the joy of the butler, he had a positive interpretation. He was one who tasted the wine of the king. And he, which in scripture, this, this wine represents the blood of Christ. Jesus took the wine and says, this represents my blood. There's a strong emphasis or symbolism here of communion. Um, the vision of releasing juice was himself being released when he, from, from the dream that he had. So here, Joseph, here's the dream. So now we have the blood and the wine, and the butler spoke and released, and later uh, Joseph was released. So there's something about power in the blood, power in the wine, that we need to take a a look at that we may never have considered. My friend Lonre out in Saskatoon is the one who shared this this story with me, this, this insight into how the butler and the uh, baker are so intricate in the in the celebration of communion and how it points to the cross and what happened there so the blood and the wine it definitely spoke the blood does speak we never think about that we think blood how can blood speak that sounds weird well it is weird but only to those who are not aware of how powerful blood is take a look at hebrews 12 24 it says this And we have come to Jesus, who established a new covenant with his blood, sprinkled upon the mercy seat, blood that continues to speak from heaven. Forgiveness, a better message than Abel's blood that cries from the earth, justice. There was a screaming, a a speaking uh, from the blood. And if, if it can happen from... From Jesus and his blood is, is speaking forgiveness and Abel's blood was screaming out for justice. There is something powerful about the blood. The blood of Jesus speaks of a better thing, of a finished work to come. Now, if, if Joseph was going through all these difficulties, uh, how can he find hope in this? Uh, well, let's keep going for just a moment here. Uh, the blood. What, what about the blood? Where can we find some hope in the blood? T- today, if we look closely, scientifically, there's DNA found in the blood. Cholesterol will tell you how you are doing, so it speaks of your health. It speaks and reveals if you've had a heart attack by doing a simple test. It will reveal anomalies that shouldn't be there and, 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 ex- and communicates there's something wrong going on in us. It also reveals the general level of your health. The doctors are going to check your blood when you go to the doctor and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Interesting. Well, maybe some of us need to know what's going on, not based on our feelings, but what is really going on. And let me suggest that the blood of Christ tells us what has gone on and it speaks to your future and current hope, regardless of what your circumstances are. This is good news today. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our circumstances, we don't realize that we have hope, but you do have hope. You have much hope. You have the hope of already being made right. So if we begin with the right mindset, then we can visit our circumstances and find a better perspective. Let's talk about this in the second half of our program. Looking for adventure in the great outdoors? It's not far from your own backyard at Conestoga River Horseback Adventures. Fun for the whole family or why not your next corporate party? Trail rides are offered all year round and other options like pony rides and birthday parties for the young cowboys and cowgirls. Afterwards, you can relax and keep the party going in their large, comfortable lounge. Conestoga River Horseback Adventures, 519-888-6503 and horsebackadventures.ca. 
Looking for a real estate agent that will put your needs before his? Terry Van Lent is just that agent. Caring and honest are just two of Terry's best qualities, and they shine through in his real estate career. As a longtime resident of Waterloo Region, Terry is well acquainted with the area and its multitude of attractive amenities. For an agent that cares, call Terry Van Lent at Coldwell Banker Peter Benninger Realty, 519-742-5800, extension 2060. We just finished talking about the power of blood, first of all, from a scientific perspective or from a doctor's perspective and and how they treat you and try to figure out what is going on with you. If you come in really, really weak to a doctor's office, they'll test your blood and say, hey, your iron's really low or this is going on or that's going on. So your blood does communicate through tests. It may not be fully verbal, but we just finished hearing about Joseph and uh, how uh, the butler and his Uh, dream coming true of being set free really was a big deal. In Matthew 26, 28, in the New American Standard Bible, it says this, for this is the blood that seals the new covenant. It will be poured out for the complete forgiveness of sins. Did I just read that right? Matthew 26, 28, for this is the blood that seals the new covenant. It will be poured out for many for the complete forgiveness of sins. A couple of weeks back, we talked about uh, how forgiven we really are. There's another powerful, powerful verse on the complete forgiveness of us. Let's take another look back into uh, uh, Joseph, an observation of how he functioned. He seemed to always be concerned for others. In each place he served, when he was uh, the head of a household and taking care of a a bigwig's home, uh, he was in charge. He cared for everything. When he was in jail, he cared for the welfare of the prisoners. He saw that the baker and butler were upset, and he went to comfort and console and see. This is, and he's in his own trial. He's in his own life going through great, great difficulty and still has a concern for others. That he's not self-centered. This, this might be a great, great lesson to you and I today. Are you so consumed with your difficulty that you cannot see how others are walking through their own difficulties? One of the best ways to deal with our own circumstances is to help others in their difficult circumstances, praying for them, helping them in any way you can. See, Joseph's faith was already strong, and he was affirmed in his interest in dreams. He had already shared that he loves dreams. So that's why when he, when the, he heard these dreams, he was able to reach out and help. Again, he was others-centered, not self-centered. He wasn't trying to find his own way of escape. He was more interested in being a carer of people, which is a, quite a big deal. Well, he kind of got forgotten because Joseph specifically asks the butler to not be forgotten. He said, please, uh, I've given you this great interpretation. Please remember me when you are free. And the butler got free and the scripture says he forgot. That is not fair. Hmm. Fair. What is fair? Do you know life isn't fair and God isn't fair? What is fair? It's a measuring tool of comparison, uh, weighing one opinion or idea against another. This is not about fairness. Joseph was forgotten. Even though he asked, he'd done the right thing. He asked for being remembered. He really was. But it wasn't until later he was remembered. We have no control over some experiences in our life. We control how we respond to these circumstances. That is something that is definitely true. So we have no control over our circumstances or some of our circumstances in life. Sometimes things happen to us. Sometimes we're part of the reason it happened, but this is not time to go beating yourself up over why, how, who, and blame. This is about, Father, help me see you in my circumstance and find hope. 
Because in this time, Joseph is in prison. God is working deeply in him through every step. When he was sold as a slave by his brothers, God was working in him. When he got sold to Potiphar's uh, home, God was working in him, giving him favor. When he was put back into prison, a, a big prison. God was working in him. When he was not released after the butler got free, God was still working in him. That is something you and I need to hear today. God is working in our circumstances. He is working deeply in you. You're asking God to rescue you. But how about asking God, uh, God, can I explain experience you right now. Yes, I want rescuing, but you already know that. So why don't you focus on him instead, on the spirit of Christ in you instead? We don't know what God is preparing us for. We have no idea what he's preparing us for. Maybe that's a good lesson today. Maybe we're right in the heat and heart of our great difficulties, but it is not the end. Hope is coming. So one day, Uh, The Pharaoh has a dream, and he is trying desperately to get an interpretation of it. And suddenly, aha, the butler remembers Joseph in prison. And the timing was probably perfect. Imagine that. Perfect timing. So he uh, he, uh, tells the Pharaoh about Joseph, and uh, the Pharaoh calls for Joseph to come stand before him and talk to him about the dream. Joseph does something powerful. He cleans up first. And then he goes to stand before the king. <laughs> Remember, he, he was a leader in the jail. And after he then interprets the dream for Pharaoh, Pharaoh says to him, I need somebody who will take care of this problem coming up. Because the, the, the dream had to do with seeing Egypt face seven years of incredible prosperity, great years, but then followed by seven terrible, terrible years the world has never seen before in famine. And so the king said, hey, if you're the one who can interpret these dreams, I'm putting you in charge of all this. So here he'd be, he's been a leader in the prison, and now he's promoted to becoming a leader of the country and saves not only himself, but a whole country and the residual effect of countries next to them. Later, he ends up being reunited with his family, totally reunited, and he tests them. He's not sure who they really are. Have these guys changed? Do they even know who I am? It took a long time before the big reveal happened where he revealed who he was. And when he did reveal to his brothers who he was, they trembled with fear. And the first thing Joseph did is he did, well, he did not say, you guys are toast now. You're going to pay dearly for what you've done to me. He didn't do that at all. He said, guys, I am your leader here now. This is this is how it is. I love you guys. I miss you. Go get my dad. I miss my dad. I can't imagine the dad's heart and ears when he leapt for joy when he heard that Joseph was in fact alive. Now, I also wonder... What did he think when he found out he was lied to? That's a whole, that's a great human question. I've always wondered that. But it gets going. You see, there's been blind sides in Joseph's life. Several of them. He was a favored son, and then he was sold off as a slave. He was removed from his country and then sold again to a foreign land. That's a big deal. He was head of Potiphar's house, and then he ended up going to a prison, a major prison. And here's the thing about all these calamities. There isn't anything recorded that he complained. I'm sure he did. I'm sorry. I'm human, and you're human. We will complain, but there's nothing recorded to communicate that that complaining was his dominant demeanor. He was instead walking in a demeanor of faith in God and trust and perhaps thankfulness. Thankfulness is more likely it because you can't complain too well when you're being thankful. It doesn't work that way. Trusting trusting God in our hardships is a hard thing to do. Joseph did it. He was very isolated, but people were watching. They saw him. They observed how he responded. Those with little or no faith are drawn to authentic faith in others who suffer. Those who've suffered much, people could be watching you. 
But that's not why you should act all faithful and happy. You should walk in faith because the God of all creation, the blood of Christ flowing through your veins is in you. That's the reason, not to show off and and set an example. The Lord was with Joseph in prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden, but he also became a favorite with the the Pharaoh of um, Egypt. This is a big, big, big day. There's more going on around you than you may realize, much more than you realize. The one who created all things, everything around you knows and is directly involved in the journey and the outcome of your circumstance. Do not lose hope today. The one who created all things that you may not be aware of knows best the motives of all, the outcomes of all, and has your best interest in mind. Rest in this fact. Are you struggling? Have you been blindsided? Have you had a blow? Have you had a character assassination? Have you had a financial blow? Have you lost your job? Have you lost a relationship? Have you lost a spouse or a child? These are horrific blindsides. Please remember, God is not absent from these difficulties. He is right there walking through them with you. In fact, carrying you when you can't even walk. He is your strength, even when you might be a blubbering mess of tears and don't even know what to say to God. He is right there listening, holding, even crying with you. Folks, find hope in even Joseph's story, but more than that, find hope in the Christ who lives in you. I look forward to joining you next week as we find more words of encouragement on still growing in grace. Family run family owned. So their focus is on you. Conestoga Lodge Retirement Residence is a full service retirement home in Kitchener. And you'll be impressed to know that they are not a big corporate chain. They're quality driven with a focus on each and every individual. Conestoga Lodge offers permanent and short term stays. To book a free, no obligation tour, you can call 519 576 2140 or visit online at conestogalodge.com. Are you looking for an encouraging church where you'll discover hope in God who truly loves and accepts you? Hope Fellowship in North Waterloo meets every Sunday at 1030, and the great coffee is only the first thing you'll appreciate. If you're looking for a safe place, a relaxed community of people who want to grow in the freedom of God's grace, welcome to Hope Fellowship, second floor of the St. Jacob's Outlet Mall. Learn more at hopefellowshipycc.com, and they do have that great coffee. You've been listening to Still Growing in Grace. I'm Pastor Mike Zenker, and I'd like to invite you to join me next Tuesday morning at 1130 when our teaching time will continue. Or join us at 1030 every Sunday morning at Hope Fellowship, your community church located on the second floor of the St. Jacob's Outlet Mall. If this show has been an encouragement to you, won't you help us spread this good news? Make your donation today by visiting stillgrowingingrace.ca. You can also catch up on past programs, watch YouTube videos of our talks, and download our weekly podcasts. Sign up for our email list and send in your questions. After all, no one has arrived, and we are all still growing in grace.